Two other concepts that we didn't really talk about as we talk about energy flow in the ecosystem yet is the idea of turnover time. Now, turnover time uh, is, is very interesting because it is possible for you to have an upside-down food pyramid. Remember that you can never really have a food pyramid, te technically, that's like this because you can't have more consumers than you have producers because that, that means that you're going to run out of re or resources and the consumers are going to start to die. We'll talk more about this when we do population ecology later in the year. But that means that the number of producers are going to limit the numbers of the upper level consumers. Well, that's true in almost every case except for some aquatic ecosystems. Because the thing is that aquatic ecosystems are maintained by algae, right? So in aquatic ecosystems, you can have this kind of setup. You can have, you know, the decreasing levels. So the higher, so it's a normal food pyramid that you would expect. But then you have, and I'm making the, the consumers be in red over here so that you can uh, see the difference between the consumers and the producers. So you have the, every level, you know, you have more more energy as you go down and down and less and less as you go up and up. So that, that basically a typical food pyramid of energy. But now I'm going to put, put the, 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 the producers. Now if I was doing this normally, I would have to have a very, very, very big green box, right? But in some aquatic ecosystems, this happens. And you may ask yourself, like, how is that even possible? How can that little producer actually sustain all of that? Well, remember the concept of how you measure net primary productivity in the ecosystem. You can measure that by the increase in standing crop. That means that the total amount of new biomass of producers that is produced every, all the time. So it's not so much about how much... Uh, how many producers are available, it's more about how many new producers are, are available. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not so much about the total biomass of producers, it's about the total amount of new biomass of producers that's an indication of, of the productivity of that ecosystem. So the thing about aquatic ecosystems is that that plankton, the microscopic organisms, the algae, the phytoplankton, uh, including also cyanobacteria by the way, if they replicate incredibly fast, and they do. All right, um, they can be their numbers can be small, and yet they can still maintain a large food web, because although their numbers are small compared to the numbers or the biomass of the of the primary consumers, as long as they replicate incredibly fast, you never run out of them. So their numbers stay small, but they're replicating so fast that they can still maintain that big pyramid. Does that make sense? That's the concept of turnover time. The faster the producers turn over, that means the faster the nutrients coming from the detrovores and decomposers can be incorporated back in the food web, the faster the, the matter is cycling, the energy is being captured, the faster the productivity is actually happening at the bottom level of the food chain, the more you can actually sustain the ecosystem. And in aquatic ecosystems, this is very common because um, the nutrients are available in these places where the phytoplankton uh, is growing at large amounts so they can actually produce incredibly a lot. So as long as you have a constant influx of nutrients in the ecosystem and all the things they need, you know, including solar energy, carbon dioxide, oxygen, water, all the nitrates, the phosphates, all the trace elements, micronutrients, plenty of carbon dioxide, if you have everything that the plankton needs, it will, it will replicate so fast that it will be able to maintain the, the levels of the ecosystem. And that's what the, the infograph on the other side is showing you. The carbon flux is very high, so it's okay even if you don't have a, 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 that much mass of the producers. Now, in terrestrial ecosystems where it takes a very, very long time for a tree to grow from you know, a little seedling to maturity, and, you know, and then for the, for the animals to eat each other, and then for those uh, dead stuff to be de to decompose, and then for the, the, for, the, for the new trees to pick that up, the cycling is a little slower. The turnover time is a little slower in terrestrial ecosystems. What that means is that uh, the productivity is, is not going to be the same. So that's why, in fact, some aquatic ecosystems are even more productive than, than terrestrial ecosystems. So the turnover time of a rainforest even is not as fast as the turnover time of, of the aquatic ecosystem. And that's why you can get that small uh, uh, kind of inverted first layer of the pyramid in some aquatic ecosystems. Another interesting concept that we didn't talk about is the idea of trophic mutualism. Now, this is the idea that ecosystems can be as simple as two organisms put together. Two examples of that is lichens and mycorrhizae. Now, these are symbiotic 
relationships between two organisms where all they need to survive is each other. Lichen is an example of a fungus that lives together with an algae, and these two over here are examples of that. So the algae is a producer that makes the sugar using photosynthesis. The fungus is a decomposer which makes the nutrients that the algae needs. And then, but the, the, the nutrients that the algae needs, the decomposer is getting from the algae itself because the decomposer is eating the algae and getting the, the sugar and the nutrients off the algae. But then the algae gets the nutrients off the decomposer. So they live in this mutualistic relationship where they help each other out. Perfect example of a trophic mutualism. All you need for this simplest ecosystem on Earth is two things. Interesting, right? The algae helps the fungus, the fungus helps the algae. The algae gives them sugar and energy, the, the, and it gets the nutrients from the fungus, which is eating the algae. So you see how that works. A similar relationship exists between some plants and some fungus. Uh, and that's called a mycorrhizae, where the roots of the plants will have this a large amount of fungus. You see that here is up close, and you here you see a big, big picture of it. So there's a, like fungus living in the roots of the plants, and so the fungus is eating off the plant, and the plant is eating off the fungus, and that means that they will live in a symbiotic relationship uh, to survive. And we even talked about this before when we talk about different types of autotrophs to exist. Mycotrophs and mycoheterotrophs, which are, are plants that live in symbiotic relationships or, par or parasitic relationships with fungus, are a perfect example of these simplest ecosystems on Earth.